What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It is Monday after a very long race weekend. We were at Digger Die. We had a blast, but you got to put the wins and the losses. You got to get your teeth kicked in. You got to put all that stuff behind you and you just keep pushing. So we're over here today. Everybody's been asking about Randy's motor. They're like, when's Randy going to race again? Randy, when are you racing again? Never. Never. <laughs> That's not true. We're over here. Soon. We find <laughs> very, very soon. Very soon. We're at the end of the race season. I mean, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and we got still a lot of work to do on this thing. So he's getting parts and pieces. He got his head studs in. So we're going to make sure we measured correctly. <laughs> I hope we measured correctly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we kind of did it. We did it together, me, Brian, and Randy. So, um, if if it's wrong, then I'm gonna, we're all going to point to each other. We're going to look like a bunch of uh, screwballs here. But hopefully, they're right. I think they are. But we're going to check those. We're going to check push rod uh, length. We're also going to go ahead and check piston to valve clearance. Check it out, guys. Comment, like, and subscribe. Go to turbojohnracing.com. We got hats available. You can get them on the website hoodies and long sleeve t-shirts go check them out all right so y'all have not seen this motor in a while it has not changed it is exactly the way we left it it's just been you know hanging out waiting to make some power so we still got this all together this is those those heads that are from cid so race flow development is the ones that ported these these things are monsters they are very big so we're going to go ahead um we're going to take these springs off uh shannon young from Bloodbath Racing. He's got the tool that we were missing last time. So this thing looks pretty cool. I've never used it before. So we're gonna use this thing and take the, the valve springs off of it so we can check piston the valve clearance. Here goes those new head studs. And there's the top fuel hoops that go into the head. Now I've never seen these outside. Ooh, those are pretty. Let's see what one of these looks like up close. Now that is the difference between the O-ring and the top fuel hoop. If you notice, this thing is very big. Of course, it doesn't protrude quite out that far, but it's got a flat side and then a rounded side. Do you know which way that goes in the head, Randy? No idea. I would assume the flat side goes down in there, but I could be wrong. It may be the square side. We're gonna have to get up with Kevin before we put those in. So those things are looking pretty good. This is who we got the studs from extremestuds.com god i hope we measured those right do that do that, what, what's the restocking fee on those studs <laughs> <Four. laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> do you remember which ones go where the long ones or the short ones i think the short ones go on the very ends at the bottom okay and then the long ones go in the center and i don't remember either yeah. we're gonna have to we're gonna have to look at the head it's been so long that we looked at it I think the ones that go under the, I think these up here, these top ones are the ones that were shorter. And then these were the longer ones. And then that was a short one. Cause we had oddball. We only had eight of the real long ones. So it's the way they do them. Wow, that thing is gnarly. You can see it's got the, the little teeny cord, uh, fine thread up here on this end. And then this is the coarse thread that goes actually down in the block. And so that's what's different is the this amount of thread is different. So it should hopefully go right in. Let's see what we got. All right, so we got these head studs in. We got the Play-Doh on the there. We got the head stud or the head gasket back on. These things were a little tight on the threads. We were using the, the uh, stud installer, but usually they thread in by hand. But Brian was thinking probably that, you know, these things have been torqued down. So we know that the thread is right on the studs because we checked it. And we think they just maybe, like maybe they pulled on them a little bit. So we got those installed on one side and Randy's over here now putting this rocker stand on. So we're gonna pull the uh, valves off of those. So you just got to torque down the rocker stand. So it's got nice and tight. All right, guys, we got this uh, tool on here. This thing is adjustable through here, so you can get perfect spot to where it needs to compress. So Randy's gonna compress this real fast. All you do is screw this down and it pops the valve down in theory, and uh, we should be good to go. Let's try it. Let's see what Randy can do here. A 
look at there. It's a nice tool. Mm -hmm. I don't feel near as sketched out with this one as I did when me and Brian were trying to. Yeah, too much for <laughs> we were trying. All right, that's good. Okay, so now get um, a screwdriver with a magnet and pop these off. Little valve locks. And another one. This is the point where usually you're about to die. This is the point where, like, you know, you're like, oh my God, oh my God. Wow, this is nice. And you just screw it up. I imagine you could do it with an impact from this point, too. Probably be easy to use an impact. But doing it by hand is always safer most of the time. Dude, I like it. Awesome. Randy said he's going to have to buy him one of these tools. Very good. All right, so he's got it up. Now I'm going to pull it off. Look at how much compressed height that spring <laughs> compressed is probably a solid inch. So it's got a lot of spring pressure. I don't know what spring pressure it's got, but that LSEM tool right there, woo, that worked good. We're gonna have to get us one, Randy. All right, so here we go. We got the test springs on it. And these things you can just push down with your hands. They don't have much pressure on them at all. So now we're gonna stick the head on it and then we're gonna go ahead and check to see if the push rods are right in there. You wouldn't have got an all solid head, it would have been lighter. Man. Can't believe how heavy those things are. It is quite amazing. Mm. Mm. Okay, they're definitely good here. Yeah. Uh, I think they're gonna have to be machined down a little bit. It is sticking up. Uh oh, so we maybe we got the head gasket on it. The head gasket is on it. Oh God, I can't tell, guys. It might be. It, it might be okay. It might be tight right there. We might have to knock the, the just the tip of the head off. No, it's not touching. Maybe we should get a little thicker head gasket. Okay, I think that might be okay. Okay, guys. So we got this. He's got this Manton kit, uh, so you can use. To tell you what size push rods you need this right here is a half inch so we got it set up in here we got our test springs on it and this is set and so this is half inch what we're trying to do is check to make sure it clears the push rod hole and see we can push it up through there no problem and that stores i mean that hit i mean that goes through no problem at all so we got to go to max lift and see if it still clears and it should but there's a chance it might not but we might even be able to get a 9 16 on it and so that's one of these over here so this is the kit that you use. So now comes the moment of two, truth. We're gonna to go to full lift. Let's we'll see if we got piston and valve clearance issues too. Let me just hold that. We'll feel it if there is. Fill it in the play doh, but it's not on the piston. Okay. And and that is still got clearance there. So that rod is good. Well, this one's down. Just swap them. Then we do the other one and roll it over and check it. And that's max. So we're just going to do the same thing on the next one. All right, guys, so it looks like we got good intake and exhaust clearance. We hadn't looked at the Play-Doh yet, but he could move it. He could fill it in the Play-Doh. But you can see right here on the exhaust side, this thing, the push rod, the half inch is actually going to hit the block. So we're going to have to clearance the block, not the head. So I think we're going to be fine on the head. So he's just double checking our measurements that we had on push rod length last time. As long as these, the other one come out perfect, this one should be hopefully the same. Then we can go ahead and order hard push rods, half inch. 9 16th is not going to work. It would work in the head, but a 9 16th will not definitely not clear the block unless it was, unless they did like a half inch way down here. But I don't think, I don't think they do that or I don't know if that's necessary.
Okay, guys. Well, that is good news. We uh, that's kind of what we were hoping. The the valve angle on this, everything is kind of stood up more. So the valve, instead of going deep down at an angle, it stands it up and makes it shallower. So the the valve actually didn't hit the clay at all until Brian pushed it down. So there is no valve to clearance issues, valve to piston. So we are good there. We verified our push rod length, so we're fine on that. So we got the same measurements twice, which is good. So um, piston valve clearance is good. We are going to have to, you can see how this hump is on the block here. It was somewhere in this area is where it was hitting. We'll have to put all the studs in it and then we'll have to uh, put the head on it and take a smaller one to see exactly where to grind. And it's just barely gonna be touching. So not gonna be that big a deal at all. So we made a lot of progress tonight, I think. Not bad. Yeah. Something we've been waiting on. We got finally got all the parts and pieces. So we're gonna stick the spring back on this one real fast. Go ahead and get that done so we don't have to worry about that. And then it's just a matter of ordering the correct length push rods and head gaskets. And once it gets that on, then man, we'll be ready to roll here soon. All right, guys, comment, like, and subscribe. We are done. We got it all done. We did have a little bit of finger pointing. I told, I told Randy that was what was gonna happen. But <laughs> we're, we're gonna have to, these are just a tad long. And by a tad, I mean just on that bevel. So we're gonna have to knock the bevels down off of the top of these, just so they clear. How, how, what was the clearance? It was like 18 thousandths. I mean, which technically that, if we put a 10 thousandths more head gasket yeah, on it, It'll clear, so we may just do that because I think got up, 50? 50. So, so, what's the compression with those heads? What's the chamber on the head? 12 and a half. No, no, what's the chamber? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. 12 and a half is valve angle, so you don't know what the. I don't know what. Is. Yeah, I don't so know what I, it is. We kind of need to know that. It's going to change tune drastically if the chamber's different. I don't know what it is compared to the other ones. Well, can you find out? Well, that's going to determine what gasket he uses. Sure, sure. I like, I like a thicker head gasket to get away from the quench. So when we when we talk about quench and flame front, these heads have been softened and you, you can see it and we pointed it out. So they basically make it like a hemi. And so what happens is this is the, the flat pad area. So they open this up a little bit to make it so you don't get the piston. When it comes up to top dead center, it squeezes into the chamber and that creates little micro detonation spots potentially. So these are softened, but Brian's right. We don't, I don't know what the CC of these heads are, what they are compared to the other one. <clears throat> yes, that's exactly right. It's, that's exactly what they do is they just, they just scoop out that section and the, the quench, soften it up. Yeah, it just makes it so, and we've been doing that. We've been doing it by hand. <laughs> Nitrous Motors was probably the first people that started doing it because they were having detonation issues. And, you know, for naturally aspirated, you want the dome to fit this perfect, to, to squeeze it all in to make it tight. But for boosted applications, it's really not a good idea. All right, guys, so we are done for tonight. So good job. Comment, like, and subscribe. Later, guys.